So now I want to kind of bring all the concepts we talked about together by giving you a tour of a small robot I designed for a competition. Um, if you're familiar with the first robotics competition, uh, this is a quarter scale version of a robot for the 2019 game in that competition. Um, the robot is designed to pick up and place balls uh, on these balls into targets. Now more importantly, I want to focus on the design elements and how they relate to what we've been talking about. The full chassis is 3D printed, uh, uh, as we talked about digital fabrication. The mechanical attachment is done with these M3 screws and nuts, and I'm using the nut trap technique where the metal nut is actually inset into the 3D printed part. For drive, we have these yellow gear motors I mentioned. They are just zip tied into the chassis, and I'm applying that important lesson we talked about, strain relief where these wires are zip tied to the chassis of the motor, so if they get yanked on, it won't damage these delicate solder connections. For the intake that picks up balls, I'm using these tiny gear motors um, that have an exposed gearbox. You can see the little gears in there and how they reduce the speed coming out of the motor itself up here. Again, we're still applying strain relief. This middle zip tie is holding the wires to the motor chassis before it wraps around so that any yanking on the wire here won't damage those delicate connections. These wires are cinched to the arm itself with additional zip ties until they run down to an area where the wires are coiled to allow for movement. Because these wires need to move, they're stranded wires to avoid breaking from metal fatigue. The arm itself is actuated with one of these uh, black, fairly generic servos. The servo horn is integrated into the 3D model of the arm so that the robot can control the arm up and down. Let's continue our look at the cable management. All these wires are cinched at multiple points to the chassis with zip ties so that stresses on the wires doesn't lead to breaks. The motor wires all terminate in these screw terminals on this custom printed circuit board to allow easy connection of raw wire to the circuit. The servo wire is coiled to take up the slack while still allowing flexibility for maintenance. And the power wire coming from this battery is twisted using the drill technique I mentioned so that the ends don't become frayed or separated. Uh, for human interface, um, there's not a lot on here. There is a power switch. It's kind of nestled way deep in there on the printed circuit board. And if I power that on, you'll see the arm kind of initialize and come to top with some visual feedback provided by LEDs. This is one area where a larger panel mount power switch would actually make the robot easier to interact with and power on and off. In terms of communication to drive the robot, uh, we're using a digital module in the form of this ESP32 microcontroller and its connection to the motor controllers down here. Um, this uh, uh, module allows for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi communication. We'll be using Bluetooth to control this robot. Now let's have a quick demo.